so my name is Katie. I'm actually a uh, former developer. I used to work making APIs, uh, but now I'm an API security researcher. And I'm not really sure how that happened, uh, to be honest with you. So a little bit about me, if you've never heard of me before. Um, I have a PhD in cybersecurity and AI. But if you know who I am, that's not why you know me. Uh, I call myself an occasional hacker and content creator. I run a YouTube channel called uh, Inside a PhD. And <laughs> I once put on like one of the conferences, I put on like job title YouTuber. And the conference organizer like said, no, people won't take you seriously if you call your job title YouTuber. Uh, but it's fine, because I am a YouTuber. Uh, I used to be a developer back in ye olden days. Um, I now hack companies. I found vulnerabilities in software you probably use every day, and certainly your government does. Um, and I work at Traceable doing a lot of like API security stuff. My technical job title is technical marketing manager, which means I'm the person on the marketing team who knows absolutely nothing about marketing and only knows technical stuff. So to give you kind of like a bit of information about my background, I started my career at age seven. Uh, creating Neopets websites with lovely marquee and lovely background images. I went to university, I did a bachelor's degree in computer science and did a lot of web development. Um, after that, I worked as a full stack uh, developer in Laravel. Um, though to be fair, that job was a little bit weird because I started it kind of photoshopping the CEO's face and I ended it creating like a full data ingress solution. Uh, I went and did a PhD, um, and then I was really fortunate to get an invite as a mentee to a HackerOne live event. And HackerOne is a security company. They provide bug bounty services, and they essentially ship out all the best hackers in the world, and me, um, to go to these events and go and hack a single company. And it was during that that I found my first vulnerability. Um, and now I make YouTube videos teaching other people how to do it. I cannot stress, when I found my first vulnerability, how little I knew. I had absolutely no idea what was going on. I'd never even seen like an API request as like a request before. Like I'd written the root that goes, you know, root get, root post. I'd written those. I'd never seen an actual HTTP request before. And then I was suddenly thrown into it and thrown into Uber of all things, giant monolithic API. Uh, yeah, I didn't really know what I was going to do. So a lot of people, when they talk about API hacking, they're going to tell you that it's a specific skill, and myself included. I will absolutely sell you a podcast called Everything API Hacking, like API hacking is one, very difficult, and two, um, special, because it's not. Every single vulnerability that I've ever found has never been really technical. Honestly, writing APIs, so much harder than hacking them by like a significant amount. And you guys all know, you all know APIs. You probably know APIs better than me now because I stopped making them ages ago. Like, I still use Laravel. Um, but a lot of the kind of vulnerabilities in API tend to be things like business logic abuse or permissions. Everything else that I try and sell you on the Everything API Hacking playlist is really just how to do it faster. Now, fundamentally, the series of hacking is this. One, find endpoints. Now, could you use a complete like API-specific recon tool? Yeah, absolutely, you could. Or you could just open the hamburger menu and just start pressing buttons and trying features. Um, you then have to understand what an application does. Again, you know, you could throw in, oh, we're going to do AI to do that. Or you could just read the documentation and read the company's about page. You then come to the difficult part of hacking. And I promise you, this is as difficult as it gets. Um, you figure out the no's. What are you not allowed to do? Like, you cannot access somebody else's account. You cannot generate a password reset token for another account. You can't access that API without a valid API key. That um, API has a rate limit of five requests a second. Um, you can't access another user's whatever tenant. Um, and then test if that no is actually a yes. 
actually, can I access another user's tenant? If I know an ID, can I access the API endpoint, even though my user technically belongs to another tenant? Can I actually do that admin function, even if I'm a regular user? Can I, in fact, access somebody else's account, even if I'm um, like not, don't know their password, for example? And then, honestly, the hardest part of API hacking is the last box, writing it so somebody else can understand it. That, that's what API hackers are not very good at. Um, like, <laughs> terrible. So what are the tools of an API hacker? Um, honestly, not that much. Again, API hacking, not hard. I'm not trying to put myself out of a job here, but I do just want to be truthful. Um, if you know how to use Postman, congratulations. You have the skills and experience to do API hacking right now. Um, I don't even use Post, uh, Postman because it's too hard and I can't be bothered. So I actually use Burp and I just read the JSON myself. Like there are specific tools. So here I've got Kite Runner. Kite Runner is like an API specific um, like recon tool that can find endpoints for you. Um, FFUF is a fuzzing tool. And again, that can find endpoints as long as you have a word list. Things like GraphQL Voyager allows you to read introspection. Yes, yes, they're all very nice. Um, fundamentally, you don't need anything more than just something that can edit requests. Genuinely, my API hacking toolbox looks like this. I don't use any other tools. I don't have to. I don't need to. I use my brain. So all you really need to get into API hacking is the ability to edit a request. Because what you're going to be doing is making really small changes in the request that you make to try and test those no's and see if they're actually a yes. Now, whether or not you're like me in Burp and doing that in JSON, or whether or not you, know, you have Postman and you're going to use the parameters tab in Postman, yeah, both are fine. Small changes, big uh, change in the results. You know, it doesn't really matter. There are other tools as well. There's things like Zap. There's a whole list of awesome bug bounty tools. Hell, you can even do it in curl. Like, no, as long as you can edit requests, that's all that matters. And again, you know, we have the API top 10, very well researched. Um, realistically, these are the four vulnerabilities that I find. And in fact, these vulnerabilities are so common. Um, I found literally some of these in five minutes. I've gone onto an application, it was a mobile application set it up, took way longer to get it like proxying the traffic onto my laptop uh, than I actually took to hack it. And then within two requests, I realized you could easily automate it and get free money. So it was a real life free money hack. So we have the OWASP API top 10. I can pretty much categorize the vast majority of my findings into these three categories. So one is access control vulnerabilities. You are a user in one organization. Can you access another organization's um, like resources in the case of a tenant's application? Can you access another user's um, order in maybe an e-commerce application? Can you access an admin functionality even if you're a lower level user? Can you uh, change a functionality even if you are a um, guest? Business logic issues, thinking about how the application works and going, huh, I don't know if it should work like that. And I genuinely mean that. I'm not, like, I'm not lying to you. That's fundamentally what my business logic things are. I found one vulnerability that was about um, you know, this. I'll show you it uh, later on. But it was this ability to change um, the like, data in something with only a uh, last name, first name, last name. Completely intentional, the developers didn't actually want to write authentication code, so they didn't. But if you think that through, it was really easy just to go on LinkedIn and go find a bunch of people who probably had accounts and access their data. And finally, information disclosure. You go access an API, go, huh, I think that's returning too much information. You read through it and you go, oh, there's credit card numbers in there. Again, these aren't huge issues. Like, I have to stress this. I don't know what I'm doing. These are basically the only issues I find because they are hard to run a scan for. You know what? You can run, like, payloads of cross-site scripting. 
payloads of different types of SQL injection in like five minutes. Um, but these kind of vulnerabilities take having a human in there. And that's, I think, why I always find them. You know, frameworks in times like web development frameworks have really reduced things like injection type vulnerabilities. We tell the developers, no, 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 no. You can't have your SQL direct query anymore. You're going to use an ORM because we don't trust you. Um, they're still bad. They're just less common than they used to be. Honestly, all my findings are caused by simple mistakes. I'm talking a single line of code. Now, I would love to have shown you um, an example of this. My idea was for this to be an interactive session. Uh, unfortunately, I have made an enemy of the demo gods today. So <laughs> we're doing slight backup plan. So what I'd like for you to do, I'm going to count to three, and I want you all just to stick your hands up, OK? And then you're just going to put them down when I say put them down. So one, two, three. Great. We all know your arms are working, so you can't use that as an excuse. Right. Stick your hands down. Um, so imagine you're in a busy office, and you're speaking to the person next to you. I would like you to tell me where you're from at that kind of level. So like you're speaking, kind of an office is a little bit loud. I'm going to say one, two, three. And then you can all say the city or the state or the country you're from. OK? Make sense? One, two, three. The United Kingdom. Excellent. Now, the thing is, I last presented this at a UK conference. And of course, it's a bunch of British people. And um, we're all very like anxious about being rude. So when I'm asking them, hey, shout out, talk over me, they're like, oh, no, I, I, I couldn't possibly do it. So I have to do that exercise with them. So this is what it looks like when I'm hacking. Oh, hearing aids falling off. Um, so this is what it looks like when I'm actually hacking something. So those who do a lot of um, programming here will probably know what's in front of them. Uh, this is a request with a token in it. Uh, the actual like output is down here, and it says bad, and it says author. So I'll look here, and I'll just start testing stuff. I'll have a go. I'll start a review. I'll type some random things. I will click every button. And that's the best piece of hacking advice I've ever gotten. Press every button, every single button. I think somebody said earlier that 20% of API endpoints aren't even used. Yes, if you're an API hacker, you absolutely want to go look for those, because they have also probably not been tested. So I'll think to myself, hmm, that's got some, some text in there. I'll try a cross-site scripting payload. What happens? Well, nothing. So it's probably not, um, like, it's probably not going to be like an XSS payload. I'm not going to waste my time. Um, and I'm just going to go, you know what, doesn't really matter. I'm going to try something else. So I'll try going to another endpoint. And I really do have to stress this. My bugs are not complex. I'm going to tell you some stories of some vulnerabilities that I found. And I think everyone in this room can find them. And I'm not saying this because I don't want to be employed. <laughs> I quite like having a job. Um, but because, honestly, we need more API hackers. And we especially need more API hackers with API development backgrounds, because Jesus Christ, you should see some of the content that gets put on Twitter about APIs. I'm never going to be on the list of the top 10 web hacking. Like, I'm never going to be the, I'm always going to be the bridesmaid, never the bride. I'm going to come do these talks talking about why things are that easy. I'm never going to be on the list. But does that mean that I don't find things? No, because it's little things. So this is a little piece of code that I wrote. This is in Laravel. If you are curious, um, the root resource uh, line there creates the, the like, get, post, put, delete, um, show like endpoints automatically for you. And I've just put there grade controller, accept, and then I've removed edit and create from the list of roots. So um, this basically controls the ability to change grades on an application. Can anyone tell me what might be wrong with this? Anyone have any ideas? Any thoughts? Put your hand up if you think it's related to authentication, so logging on. Put your hands up if you think it's related to permissions. 
not the parameter, um, it's lacking the middleware of authentication. Um, it's, it doesn't have any middleware on it. So that means that anybody could, like whether or not they're logged in or not, have access to it. Again, here is another example. This again is Laravel. I used to be a Laravel developer if it wasn't obvious. Um, this is a delete function that deletes a user from a table. Sorry, it deletes all the users from a table um, and then it truncates two other tables as well. Um, and then it returns deleted everything. It deletes the entire database, basically. So put your hands up if you think this might be a problem with logging on. Authentication? Authorization? Yeah, absolutely. This is an authorization type of vulnerability. And it's fundamentally just missing an if statement. And I've made so much money from missing if statements. Like, I really cannot stress how much money missing if statements have made me. If you know APIs, you can do API hacking. Everyone in this room, like, eats, sleeps, breathes APIs in one form or another. Maybe you're an architect. Maybe you're a um, developer. You know APIs. You know far more about APIs, and you are far more qualified than any API hacker. And truthfully, no API hacking course is really going to help. So let's look at an actual vulnerability and some of my elite hacker findings. So I was looking at a um, API, and it had like a visual, you know, your standard JavaScript interface. Um, you know, it has populated by a RESTful API in the background. So we can see here, we've got our CRUD functionality, right? We can see individual records, and then there's a button to edit and delete them. And we can kind of assume from that that you know, we're looking at a RESTful API. There's a um, endpoint that gets every single record or every single resource in the API. And there is like a functionality for like a put to edit it and a delete as well. And it loaded up, if you clicked on this, it loaded up a nice form. Um, but if you, say, try to access a resource you didn't own, try to access the form, it would give you a 403 access forbidden. You couldn't submit the form. Does anyone want to take a guess at what kind of vulnerability we might have from this? So you could go onto another user's like API resource. Let's say it's an order, and you can see their order. Um, you couldn't edit it. You couldn't submit the forms. You can't change it. What other vulnerability might there be? Pardon? Deleting it? Yeah, absolutely. What else? Think RESTful API input. So we've got our, we've got our CRUD functionality. So we can't um, update it. We might be able to delete it. What else? What are the two, the two other? Create one? Yeah. And what's the final one? Create. Read, yeah, absolutely. We can still see all the data. We may not be able to edit the data or delete the data necessarily, but we can still read it all. And if we're looking at something that should be private data, um, you can, in fact, just look up you know, someone's private information, and you can see it, even though you can't edit it. So my time is now up. Um, if you would like to come hack alongside me, uh, the company I work for, Traceable, they make an API security product. Like I said, I'm on the marketing team and know nothing about marketing. Um, you can actually come join, and we're doing like a 12, every single month we do an API security class. And you can follow me on uh, YouTube and LinkedIn for a version of this talk. But you can slow it down or speed it up, I guess. Thank you very much, everybody.